Well, today I have a special guest here with me, Melissa Ferguson, and I'm going to let her share some of the particulars of her story in just a little bit. But before I do, all of us knows Christmas looks so different this year, um, and yet in the midst of it, we're still to live this time with a unique sense of joy and expectancy that God still wants to move in our lives. He still wants to give us peace and hope in trying circumstances. And I think that Melissa's story is going to give all of us today a unique insight into that. Uh, Melissa's been in my small group for, I don't know how many years? Uh, uh, three, four? Several years. Yes. <laughs> and um, every time she just has some amazing things to share. Um, and so welcome, Melissa. So glad you're here today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa, would you tell us just a little bit about the journey that you've been on this last year? in particular so January the end of January of this year I was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer that spread to my liver we had no signs nothing I didn't have any pain and quickly though they got me into surgery to remove the cancer out of my colon but then they told me for sure I would have to do chemo so in March I started chemo for six months and it was a very rough time physically emotionally spiritually mentally and I just had to put one foot in front of the other and just continue to ask God to give me the strength to get through my day because I didn't know what chemo would do to my body I was told it could make me weak I would be tired I might have a bunch of side effects but something in me just knew that God was gonna work through this and be my healer. Mm. And so even on the dark days where I would be in pain in my bed, I still would just say, I would just look up and just say, God, you're my healer. Mm. I don't know how, I don't know when. And I thought for sure after six months, I would be done. Mm. And then we found out that the tumors were still there. They had shrunk so much by the end of August, but they were still there. And so I recently, about a month ago, I started more chemo. It's less hard on my body, I would say, because I'm not having to go in every week to go get chemotherapy. Um, and so I just continue to trust God. I feel like I've been born into a family of faith and God. And so I just, I hold to my family and to my church. And you guys have all been so kind to me through it all. I don't know what I would do without my community and without prayer from you and your wife and all of City Church, I just feel so blessed that even though people aren't walking what I'm walking, you're walking alongside with me. And so if I feel like I'm gonna fall, there's somebody there to catch me. And I don't know where I would be without God and his word and prayer and people and encouragement. And even in the middle of all of that, God would ask me to go encourage people. And you would think, I'm the one that needs the encouragement. Tell, tell them a bit about uh, when you go to chemo, you have a particular ritual every time. What oh. do you do? Okay, I love Disneyland. Okay, so our house, it's Jesus and Disneyland or Mickey Mouse. And so <laughs> I just told myself, I'm gonna do chemo, I'm gonna do it my way. So I wear a different pair of Minnie Mouse ears. Every time I go in, and of course, at first, people kind of gave me some weird looks, some of the patients, but the nurses loved it. And so they would come by, what, what ears are you wearing today? And I was so excited. I thought, you know, I'm just kind of being silly because it brings me some joy, but I had no idea that it would bless the nurses. And goodness, like for them to be able to walk a pandemic, and know that I could bring a little joy to them, I would always walk away even after a long chemo session and just say, Lord, thank you for letting me be a light today. Mm. And it was like, I didn't dread it as much. Of course, nobody wants to go to chemotherapy, yeah. but when you know that God's gonna get to use your story and use the hard stuff mm. for his glory, I mean, I'll take one for the team. It's not something anybody should have to walk through. For sure, not at my age. You would think colon cancer, a 50, 60 year old. I'm in my late 30s. Yeah. And this happened. Yeah. But God had a plan. And it's not my plan. But when I surrender to his plan, then 
he can do amazing things. And I've seen nurses smile mm. and offer prayer or tell me, I prayed for you last week mm. and I would have a hard week. And how would they know? But they just knew, they knew God. And so it's just so cool to see how God can take something really awful mm. and make it beautiful. That's and amazing. it's a way that I can point people to Jesus even if they don't accept him right at that moment how cool it is that i'm planting seeds someone else can water and someone else can harvest i don't have to do it all but it's actually trying to take the time to say okay god what do you want and it's not why me this happens to me because at first i was like why me lord this is not right but later it changed to why not me because why not me? Why not me have to walk cancer? Anybody is going to deal with stuff hard in their life, but if you change your perspective of why not me, then God can really use it. But it's an attitude change. It's a shift of perspective. It's seeing God and saying, I know who you are. You are true. You are real. Like, I didn't just grow up in a nice church and go to Sunday school. I learned through this that God really is who He says He is. And we have to find hope and faith in our journey. And it's not easy, but I just have to say, God is the one who gets you through it. And He brings people to help you. So I'm very grateful. Even though I'm still walking it, He has the perfect time for me to be healed. And yeah. until then, I'm just gonna be positive and just all I want to be is a light for him. That's I want amazing. people to see me, and when they see me, see him. That's amazing. Um, and I can say that's certainly been true from everything I've seen. Um, you know, what are some of the things in this last year that have helped you balance the stress of 2020 <laughs> uh, with the stress of your own situation? You know, the world has gone through a crisis, but you're going through one too. So what are some things that have helped you balance that and find hope in the midst of it? Uh, for me, it's taking time out, like by myself, to just be alone. Uh, I have a husband and a daughter, and so it's just getting away to my room and to have that peace and quiet. Um, and also worship music is huge for me. If I'm having a rough day, I let myself have a little pity party for a few minutes, but then I turn on worship music because it will help me shift that so I don't go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. I want to be able to say, okay, I'm human, I feel this way, but Lord, please come into my life and help what's going on be okay. Help me to be able to give it to you. And yeah. worship music has been incredible. And I'm telling you, I feel like even though the world is going through a pandemic, songwriters are writing incredible songs for God. And yes. it's just been powerful. And then finally his word. If we don't have his word, I don't feel like we actually can know who he is. Mm -hmm. And so when I struggle, maybe I don't feel like I have a lot of strength. I remember Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I do it because he gives me the strength. It's not my own strength. Yeah. My own strength is gonna get me only so far, but with his strength, I can exceed that. And so having his word is so powerful. And it's not just reading it and skimming it, it's reading it and meditating, stopping and going, what does God really say from this Bible verse or this chapter? So that's been very helpful for me. That's so awesome. I mean, just, we all should, the longer we walk with God should know that. And yeah. you know, you are taught those things, but it's amazing to hear like, you know, that in the midst of what you're going through that you're just really clinging to that. And uh, I think there's a lesson in there for all of us to, to think about. Let me ask you a question. How would you have defined hope a year ago and how would you define it today? Uh, hope a year ago, probably. I never see hope as silly, but maybe I would see it as, you know, just something I think could happen. You know, that would be hope a year ago. Hope now is I believe the best in, I believe the best for a situation, even if the situation is not great. So I got not great news recently. And, but I said, it doesn't matter. I still have hope 
in yes. Christ that even though that's the news I get, my hope is I think the best for that situation. So Lord, you're still my healer, even though this is the news I have. Yes. So it's learning to be able to say, God, I don't like this situation, but yes. it's a situation. He still is good. He still is ho hope. Mm -hmm. Our situation may not be great, but he's still good. They're not, they don't go hand in hand. They're two separate things. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we don't say, oh, I'm going through a tough time, so God's not good. No, God is good Amen. regardless of the situation. So regardless of COVID, regardless of cancer, regardless of whatever you go through, you have to be able to say, that's a situation, but my God is still good. And my God is still on the throne. And if we don't understand that and be able to separate the two, then I don't really feel like you can find hope. Amen. Because you will lean on the side of reality, which is okay. Yes. It's okay to have the reality of it, but we've got to have hope and faith too. Yes. And I lean more towards the hope and faith. I lean more towards the, it's going to be okay, even though it's not okay. Yes. Because, hey, God has the final say. Not he a does. doctor, not a medicine, not anything. God has the final say. And so if I say, God, my hope is in you, I can say, give me whatever news you want. Go at me, devil, come on. I got my shield of faith up today. But God, you get the final say. And you did it on the cross. Hmm. If you did it on the cross, it's finished. Amen. So why am I gonna sit here and try to fight a battle that's already been won? Hmm. He won it. He won my healing. Even before I'm healed, he won it. So we have to be able to understand he's good, no matter what, no matter what. I love that. Just hope, believing the best in the situation you find yourself in. That is just so good. And something that even for myself this year, I, I need to think about more. Would you have any final words of encouragement that you would want to share with someone going through something, struggling to find hope in their own life? Sure, I would love to. Go ahead and share. I just want to say no matter what you're walking through, one, you're loved. You're loved by God. You're loved by people. Two, you are important. You were born for a purpose. You have a story. You have a reason to live, a reason to get up today. You have air in your lungs and you can walk. So get up and do something for him. Put a smile on your face, even if you don't feel like it, because I'm telling you, if you fake it for a while, it'll start to show up <laughs> real. So it. keep going, persevere, put one foot in front of the other and reach out to community, people. You need people that love God and love you to pray for you, to encourage you. You are so loved. May you feel God's love today and always, no matter what Christmas looks like this year, may we remember that a savior was born for us, for you, specifically for you to know him and to have salvation. May you have hope this Christmas. It may not come from a Christmas tree or food or decorations, but it come from Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. If he loves me, he loves you. So why not today make a choice if you don't know him to ask for his salvation into your heart. Reach out and you are amazing. I love you and I can't wait to tell you that I am healed. And when I am, I get no glory. He gets it all. And I'm so grateful for you. I love you. Amen. Well, I would like to pray for you. And you. Uh, hey, wherever you're watching this right now, pray for Melissa and her journey and everything that she's going through. So let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for Melissa. We thank you for her hope. And we thank you, Lord, that it's not pie in the sky. It is real. And it is as real as the air we're breathing and the ground we're standing on. Uh, it's as real as you are, Lord, because hope is found in you. And so we thank you for that. And right now, Lord, I, we all just want to pray, Lord, for Melissa's complete healing. God, we pray that from 
head to toe, top to bottom, inside and out. You would cause every cell in her body to respond in healing the way that you have designed it to. And so, Lord, we just pray that these doctors would have great wisdom, that the medicines would take effect. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give her strength to get through these treatments. I pray for her family, for her husband Nathan and sweet little Emma and everything they're dealing with this year. Uh, Lord, infuse them all with hope and and with purpose, and we pray for just a, a miraculous healing in her life. We'll believe you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.